Hello friends, welcome to Concepts of Geology, the Crystallography series. Today on the ninth class, we are going to learn about the Trigonal Crystal System. So on the sixth class of the series, that was the Crystal Systems, we learned that we have seven crystal systems in crystallography. Among these seven crystal systems, the trigonal system was the toughest to understand. This always produces a doubt or question mark in the mind of each and every student of crystallography. So today we are going to put a deeper look into this trigonal system. Okay, so let's begin. So from the very beginning of the series of crystallography, we are talking about the seven basic shapes of unit cells in three dimensions. Okay. And this is the seventh shape, which is the rhombohedral shape. Remember, whenever we talked about this unit cell shape, we told that we will discuss it in a later class in details. Okay, so today is that class where we are going to learn about this uh, unit cell shape and the trigonal crystal system. Now, recall the class where we had learned about the seven crystal systems these were the seven crystal systems triclinic monoclinic orthorhombic tetragonal trigonal hexagonal and cubic system okay so there we had two crystal systems trigonal and hexagonal those are having cell constants and the angle just same okay look here the cell constants of trigonal and hexagonal system they are just copy to one another okay and the angles are also same we explained that this is happening because trigonal and hexagonal crystal systems they are belonging to a same family and it was told that actually we have six crystal families and seven crystal systems so a definite question is arising here that why they are placed in a single crystal family while they are belonging to different crystal systems now first we will try to understand that why we group trigonal and hexagonal system in a single crystal family because both the systems may have unit cell shapes identical okay this is very clear that when two crystal systems or two uh, unit cells are having same cell matrices okay that means they are shaped are just similar in case of hexagonal system the unit cell is a primitive rhombic prism okay this one when we are talking about shape this is a rhombic prism but this is primitive okay so we are taking three such primitive rhombic prisms together to express the hexagonal symmetry of this uh, system more conveniently okay but in case of trigonal system the unit cell could be so chosen that it becomes a non-primitive rhombic prism okay so again by shape this is a rhombic prism but you see we have two extra lattice points inside the unit cell okay so that means this is a non-primitive cell but by shape again this is a rhombic prism so they are in same crystal family because the unit cell of both the system may be so chosen that their external appearance will be similar okay that means the rhombic prism in one case it will be a primitive rhombic prism and in another case it will be a non-primitive rhombic prism okay but now why should we treat trigonal crystal system different from the hexagonal system this is because of symmetry and the unit cell sap try to remember the basis of our discrimination between the unit cells okay when we were talking about the crystal systems the basis was the symmetry and the unit cell sap in case of trigonal system, the symmetry is a three-fold rotational symmetry, while in case of hexagonal system, we have a six-fold rotational symmetry. Okay, So that means trigonal system is symmetrically lower than the hexagonal crystal system. Again, in trigonal system, the unit cell may be chosen as a primitive rhombohedron. Okay, Try to understand just some minutes before. I was talking about a non-primitive rhombic prism which can be chosen as a unit cell of a trigonal system but now I am talking about a primitive rhombohedron okay this is a primitive unit cell of trigonal system this may be also a, a, a unit cell of the trigonal system but in case of hexagonal system the cell is a primitive rhombic prism okay we just discussed it hexagonal crystal system is always having a unit cell this is a primitive rhombic prism okay but in case of trigonal system we may have two types of unit cells 
the first one is a primitive rhombohedron and the second one is a non primitive rhombic prism okay so when we are talking about the primitive rhombohedron this is different in shape from this primitive rhombic prism okay so that means trigonal system and hexagonal systems may have different shapes of unit cells so this is a cause to place them in different crystal system i told that the trigonal system is having a three fold rotational symmetry and the hexagonal system is having a six fold rotational symmetry so the trigonal system is symmetrically lower than a hexagonal crystal system but surprisingly we will notice that both the crystal system i mean trigonal and the hexagonal crystal system can be originated from the different stacking pattern of this hexanet okay this is a rhombus in two dimension okay and this angle is 60 degree okay so here we are having a six fold rotational axis and these two points i mean the center of this equilateral triangles they are having a three fold rotational axis here and definitely we are having a mirror plane uh, here okay so this is the total symmetry of this uh, rhombus now when we are stacking this rhombus in a vertical way okay like this one we are having this type of symmetry axis okay see here we are preserving the six fold rotational axis like this okay so here we have a six fold rotational axis and again here also we are having a six fold rotational axis okay interestingly as we are placing these rhombus just one above another vertically so we are preserving this three fold rotational axis also okay the vertical mirror plane is also preserved here remember i told in case of any plane lattice when we are stacking them the vertical stacking preserve the maximum symmetry of the lattice okay so here the all symmetries are preserved this is the unit cell for a hexagonal system okay this is a rhombic prism fine now we will see a different type of stacking pattern this one here the same rhombus is working as the base lattice but stacking is not vertically one above another okay see here we are having an offset okay so due to this offset we are losing the six fold rotational symmetry think of this point which was actually a six fold rotational axis this is now coinciding with this two uh, three fold uh, rotational axis okay so what is the result we are losing the six fold symmetry but interestingly the three fold rotational axis is preserved okay see here this three fold rotational point and this three fold rotational point are superimposed one above another okay and when we are going to the upper lattice we are having this six fold rotational point okay but very cleverly when we are having a six fold rotational symmetry here that means definitely we have a three fold rotational symmetry here okay so when we are stacking them vertically we are having the three fold rotational axis preserved but we are losing the six fold rotational symmetry here okay so this is what this is again a rhombic prism but with two extra lattice points okay this one and this one inside the rhombic prism okay inside the unit cell so this is becoming a non primitive rhombic prism and this is working as the trigonal unit cell and this is a primitive rhombic prism which is working as the unit cell for hexagonal crystal system now think of the moment when i told that we may have two choices of unit cells in case of trigonal crystal system first one is this a uh, non primitive cell okay this is a non primitive rhombic prism and the second choice may be a primitive cell which is the rhombohedron so when a single crystal system like trigonal system may have two choices of unit cell that means they must be interchangeable okay so that means this two types of bravais lattices they are uh, duplicate or redundant but the problem is how this can be concentrate on the stacking pattern of this rhombus okay when we are stacking like this we may have two choices of unit cells okay if i choose the unit cell like this one this is a, a rhombic prism and this is non primitive because we are having this lattice point and this lattice point uh, inside the unit cell okay so this is a non primitive unit cell and the shape is a rhombic prism but alternatively we may choose the unit cell like this one and this shape is called a rhombohedron okay this is a inclined or distorted cube very clearly this is a primitive unit cell okay and these are reproducible okay so now we have understood that we may have two choices of unit cell okay primitive rhombohedron or non primitive rhombic prism but 
One may question me that why should we take the rhombohedron shape as one of the unit cell? I mean, why we cannot uh, ignore it? This is because this can fill a 3D space by only translation without leaving any gap. Okay, no rotation is happening here. So this is a strong criteria for being a unit cell. We cannot ignore the rhombohedron shape as a unit cell. But then the next question is which one is the most convenient unit cell for the trigonal system. To understand that we need to recall the theory or the rule for choosing a best fit unit cell. Okay? There was a rule where it was told that whenever possible the edges of the unit cell should be orthorhombic. If there is no alternative then the interfacial angle should be so chosen that it should be close to 90 degree. Now I have placed two unit cells side by side you can see that in this case the non-primitive rhombic prism we have a b and c axis they are orthogonal to each other that means they are mutually perpendicular to each other okay but in case of this primitive rhombohedron the three crystallographic axis a b and c they are not at all orthogonal because the rhombohedron is an inclined cube and when a cube is inclined no angle remains 90 degree there was again a rule or a convention that the highest axis of symmetry should be so oriented that it coincides with the C crystallographic direction for the unit cell. Okay. So again this is qualifying the criteria. Here the C crystallographic axis is so oriented that it is coinciding with the threefold rotational axis. Okay. The threefold rotational symmetry is the maximum symmetry, the highest symmetry which is present here. So this is coinciding. But in this case, the threefold rotational axis is like this one, but we have the C crystallographic direction this one. So now I think we have understood that which one is the most convenient unit cell for trigonal crystal system. The answer is the non-primitive rhombic prism. Okay? And interestingly, this non-primitive unit cell is showing a pseudo hexagonal symmetry. Okay? So this is the time to summarize the class and to end the confusion between the hexagonal and trigonal crystal system. The hexagonal and trigonal crystal systems are grouped in a same crystal family because the convenient unit cell in both lattices, okay, that means the rhombic prism, they are possessing similar shape, okay, they are having similar matrix also. On the other hand, the hexagonal and trigonal systems are treated as different crystal system because the symmetry of the unit cells are different. In case of hexagonal crystal system, the maximum symmetry is six-fold rotational axis. Okay? The unit cell is a primitive rhombic prism, while in case of trigonal system, it is possessing only a three-fold axis of symmetry. The unit cell may be a non-primitive rhombic prism or a primitive rhombohedron. Okay? In both cases, we are having only three-fold rotational axis of symmetry. So now I think you have understood the interrelationship between the hexagonal and trigonal crystal system. Okay? So this is for today. We will meet again on the next class where we will learn about the relationship between the shape of the unit cell and the shape of the resulted crystal or the shape of the resulted mineral. Okay? So goodbye till then.